you said that you're not very religious about your diet and it reminded me of uh, a, po a point you raised in your interview with Dr. Baker. Uh, oh. The way you look at quote unquote cheat meal, how do you view that? Because that I found very interesting and I would like yeah. you to repeat it here, please. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how active you or your listeners are necessarily in, say, the uh, keto communities or whatever online, but there's this fear of being kicked out of ketosis if you have this, um, you know, uh, like a higher carbohydrate treat. I was just talking to somebody who accidentally took a sip of iced tea that was sweetened, and they were freaking out about it. I said, look, calm down, you're okay. You know, an entire mouthful of Coca-Cola is like five grams of sugar. If you took a big slug of this tea, you're not even anywhere near that, but... Um, I look at food as not as more than just fuel. fuel. Food is enjoyable and it should be, but there are foods that behave very much like drugs. Okay, I think that you can look look at an Oreo. There's no nutrition in it, but it's you can put it into your body and it has an effect. To me, if if it's not sustaining you, if it's not providing you with nutrition, it is a drug. And that's okay. I'm not even anti-drug. I just think if you're going to be putting something into your body, you need to understand what the effects are of it and to make a judgment call. Put it on the scale. Say, is, is the good going to outweigh the bad? If so, go for it. Rock and roll. Uh, and that's how I view the, the cheat meal. I don't like cheat meal because if I was cheating on a diet, if, you say, if you're cheating at chess or something, you're bending the rules to give yourself an unfair advantage. Cheating on your diet would be like you know, taking amphetamines. That's cheating on your diet. You take amphetamines so you don't eat for a month guarantee you lose weight and that, but that's that's cheating right but they say a cheat meal i say don't do a cheat meal do a treat meal and a treat meal is something that is special so you know some people say oh every two weeks you have a pop tart or whatever and i'm like that seems kind of silly right i mean the pop tarts they're always there they're on the they're on the shelves they're they're not made with love they're not you know there's nothing special about them and that, that's something that you know, growing up, I loved sandwich cookies. I loved the Oreos. I loved, uh, we had these EL fudges, which were like a chocolate sandwich cookie. And I think everybody has some kind of relationship with a sandwich cookie. And that would be my sort of indulgence if, uh, you know, if I ever had like a bad day or whatever. And in fact, you know, I had a, a period after um, finding health where things kind of went all to hell. And, I, you know, I, I went down the rabbit hole of the, uh, the sandwich cookie and ice cream again. And I gained quite a bit of weight back. Um, and the realization hit me is that, you know, I've lived through, you know, maybe not as much as, as, as other people, but I mean, there's been some, some big global events in my lifetime. You know, we had, you know, global recessions and we had COVID and we had, uh, which is the, uh, you know, 9-11 and we had, uh, you know, all, these, all these, these terrorist attacks and we had these shortages and we had the, the stock market crashes and everything else. But you know what? Oreos are always on the shelf and they're always going to be on the shelf because they're made by a robot a thousand miles away. And there's, there's, if you really, if the, if the path to your happiness is actually going to run through a three dollar box of cookies on the shelf at the store down the street, if, that's, if you really think about it, and that is really the last thing keeping you from being happy. Just go get it. Your life is perfect already. What do you, what do you even care about your health at this point? Your life is perfect. You got, all you need is one more box of cookies, and you're going to be perfectly happy. Go get it. But to me, I look at it and say, there's probably something else I should do, and. If there's something that is special, you know, for example, for my wife's birthday a couple of years ago, we were in Las Vegas. And there's a very, very good restaurant there called the Momofuku. And um, I think it's David Chang's restaurant. And we got this amazing, like, 10-course meal. And it had, yeah, it had rice and, and cake and all this other kind of stuff that came with it. And we had these uh, uh, craft cocktails. I had sugar uh, in them as well. And it was a phenomenal meal. And it was worth it because I don't. I'm never going to have a chance to, well, I won't say never, but I don't have a chance to do that every day. I can go get Oreos every day. I can't have a meal at the Momofuku every day. I can't have, you know, for example, my like grandma's apple pie or whatever. Um, I can't have, you know, some regional treat maybe while I'm on vacation. You know, I, I, I get to travel a bit. So there's certain things that I just can't get locally. Okay. And I'll, I'll look at it and say, oh, if it looks good enough. Yeah, let's try it. Uh, let's try a little bit.